All right, all you have to do is look up at a busy intersection in parking lots, toll areas of interstates, in malls, stores, on bridges, and surveillance cameras are everywhere. But do you know who really is watching you on the other end? With that question in mind, the United States is now pondering a ban on one specific company, Chinese surveillance firm Hikvision, which manufactures cameras and artificial intelligence-powered products which can track people using facial recognition technology. This comes after the ban on Chinese telecom Huawei, which was temporarily lifted but will still go into effect this August. In a Fox Business exclusive from the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy at Tufts University, Professor Joel Trackman joins us. He is the world's foremost expert on international law. Joel, let's get right to this. Uh, I knew that our own companies here were setting up cameras, and, and in many situations, they solve crimes. They solve problems. They solve shootings because these, these surveillance cameras have captured these things. But now there are Chinese cameras as well. And, and talk about how you see this latest uh, blacklisting. Well, there are cameras everywhere from baby monitors to uh, smart speakers, uh, all sorts of things are observing us. And those things are all networked. And if you can hack into those things, uh, you can see what's going on. And uh, frankly, if uh, those things come from a foreign country, uh, they might have back doors. But even if they're produced here, it's not impossible to hack into them. So uh, privacy uh, is uh, being challenged. And of course, in China, you've got an Orwellian um, uh, surveillance state mm -hmm. where everyone's watched to use artificial intelligence and big data to see what everyone's doing, who they're talking to, what they're talking about, and, and so on. For this company, Hikvision, which I had not heard of uh, before this uh, latest announcement, uh, one of the main focuses is the fact that their surveillance gear has been used to uh, surveil the Uyghur Muslims, uh, this minority in yeah. uh, northwestern China. And part of it is a protest against the treatment of those people. They've got a, a million people in uh, re-education camps. Uh, they're being uh, constrained quite a bit. They're being uh, sought to be assimilated into Chinese Han culture. Uh, and Marco Rubio and a group from Congress uh, wrote a letter to the executive saying, can't we do something? So, okay. so that's what's going on there. Well, the question also becomes, we know how important security is for this country. In fact, that has a lot to do with the accusation that Huawei could very well put together a 5G network within this country and use it as a portal to spy on Americans or to steal all kinds of information. And we just had at the top of the show the breaking news that ARM CEO, ARM, they make the chip architecture that many chip companies, including Huawei's uh, chip division, use. They have had to cease and desist doing business with this Huawei division because of the new government rule. So is it security or some skeptics say it's, it's trying to establish tech supremacy over the Chinese? Yes. Uh, well, they're both at play and, and they're both in part driven by security. Uh, so cybersecurity is a, an enormous issue. And Huawei is a supplier of 5G. The United States, as you know, has uh, tried to prevail on European allies and Australia and Canada to not use Huawei network equipment. Theresa May has said we won't use it for core parts of our 5G network. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the question is, how will we develop 5G? But you're absolutely right that uh, there's really no way to be certain that these things are safe. The British have set up a system where they look at these things intensively, but it's always networked, so it's always updated. And it's hard to be sure that what you've looked at is the one that's actually installed in the equipment. And so it's very difficult to be comfortable that these things are safe. And this is true of 5G, but it's true of all Internet of Things types of items. Right. Uh, and so as we move to that, we're going to have a, a terrific security question. Privacy, in my judgment, is not going to be available to many of us as a natural thing. The only way we'll get privacy is through legal protection. And then you're dependent on the mm -hmm. laws of different countries and the goals of, of different countries. I remember way back um, in the day, the easy passes where you go through tolls. People said they're using to spy and find out where you're going. Now it's so insidious. And I think 
to really find privacy, you've got to disconnect, maybe. We'll be watching it. Joel, yes. thank you very much.